Uh, we, I am presenting this subject for the second time. The first, uh, first I spoke about at the previous conference. Some questions were made from well-known physiotherapists and clinicists who uh, made some comments. Uh, we worked uh, for two more years uh, on it. Uh, we have been collecting material or double the materials we have. We have done additional chemical studies, physical chemical properties studies is for these factors, on these factors. And now we decided to introduce this information for a second time. It has involved uh, the work of a team of neurologists and rehabilitologists, uh, uh, an experimental team that has uh, helped us examine these patients. Well, the relevance here is uh, quite uh, known because everyone knows uh, that about 90% of all um, diseases uh, in trauma centers uh, have to do with pain syndromes and it's for the etiology of this uh, um, disease uh, which has to do with osteochondrosis. Usually it's this kind of patients that come to us, uh, they come to us with osteochondrosis uh, uh, involving pathologies of the spine, the vertebrae, and uh, major joints and large joints. I will, you know, these concepts. I will not go deep into them. Also, we would uh, receive patients uh, with a uh, pain syndrome. And somewhere in the middle uh, of the progression of this pathology, when there is severe dehydration of the joint, a protrusion occurs. Um, uh, which uh, can be seen uh, in the X-ray or in the MR and the CT. Sometimes it can be this uh, hernia bag that appears, and then there are bone changes, uh, and we can see osteochondrosis of the spine or of the joints that are severe. The x-rays uh, show it like this. Here you can see this uh, dehydrated cartilage with uh, destructive changes in it. Uh, this is the third stage and uh, the fourth stage there is a protrusion and this uh, release of the hernia bag. The standard methods of treatment uh, are usually given uh, this uh, non-drug uh, therapy, massage, electrostimulation, hydrotherapy, laser therapy. As for drugs, we get this anti-pain therapy, capisocin, acetamifonel, uh, non-selective uh, anxiety uh, inhibitors, uh, tramadol, vitamins B, and uh, counterprotective uh, agents. So this is what our traumatologists uh, prescribe. As for the ozone therapy, uh, paravertebral and paraarticular blockades with ozone are common. And also, massage using ozonized oil and cream and discolysis with ozone. Uh, discolysis by ozone has the target of hitting this uh, destructed uh, cartilage in a C curve. Um, and we see specialists who have to work on this manipulation. Uh, they have to be expert. expert adapt to this. Also, there are non-competing methods uh, that are aimed at uh, the uh, taking away this um, pain syndrome like laser vaporization where a laser beam uh, goes in which uh, vaporizes uh, the content of the de in the destruction uh, destructive hernia. Mm, but this method is limited also because the laser that uh, uh, hits uh, the space uh, in where the damaged or destroyed cartilage is located. It usually doesn't keep the hernia space. Uh, not all gets uh, evaporated, and in the hernia space, uh, the destructive elements remain. So there are limitations as for the indications for this method. Also, we have physiotherapies in traumatology. Uh, that uh, this uh, intra-tissue electrostimulation is for physiotherapy developed by our oral uh, traumatologist, uh, Mr. Andrei Gerasimov, that has a patent to this method. It has a this uh, low, this modular high-frequency impulse uh, current with parameters close to the bi-currents of a person, and this. Uh, 
uh, method was approved by the Ministry of Healthcare, and um, there it has been ob observed on 25,000 persons or more. However, out of all of these approaches, um, we don't think uh, the most pathogenetic factors are not taken into account behind this pathology that lead to the pain syndrome. It's uh, the reduction of the transport uh, uh, of the bone contacts, like uh, a disc or a joint or a cartilage, and a sharp reduction because of this of uh, the supply of oxygen because all of these agents are aimed at the destruction. Uh, of already destroyed morphological structures and the, the scientific factors behind uh, this development uh, was, uh, you know, that Americans got this Nobel Prize uh, for uh, discovering special channels in the skin, in the tissue that uh, have these special proteins called aquaporins, aquaporins. And later there was another discovered by Verhard, Eberhard, uh, which uh, dug deep into the essence of electrophoresis, saying that uh, uh, under the influence of an electric field, these channels ca or canals start uh, letting through hydrophil uh, compounds uh, to a higher degree. So this pathogenetic uh, grounds uh, were the basis uh, for of our development of this uh, well-known method of electrostimulation. And also we decided to provide s the supply of oxygen uh, through the creams uh, that we use in our clinical practice that contain ozonides uh, and ozonides and uh, that's what we call them. And at the last conference we were asked what is uh, what do you have in those creams? The second question was uh, when do you apply the, when you apply these creams between the electrodes? What happens there in them? Because uh, the creams used in dermatology have a lot of components in them, and when uh, an active form of oxygen gets there, what happens to it? So we needed uh, to continue our research in vitro. When we put this cream in an electrical field outside the body and when we modeled it, uh, it's part of procedures where electrostimulation is applied. And the same method was repeated on animals, uh, and the same creams were applied. The goal uh, was uh, to see the systematic influence, uh, whether it was there, whether there was active oxygen. And then the patients were. In patients with orthopathics and dorsopathics uh, were applied electrodes upon on the spine and major joints of the lower and uh, lower extremities. So 43 patients were there, 20 of them uh, treated by the standard scheme, traditional scheme that uh, included electrostimulations and painkillers, drug painkillers. The second test group had electrostimulation, but uh, our ozonide creams were also applied there in order to choose the uh, ozonides. Um, some well, some chemical investigations I failed to mention. That we studied the spectrum of anosonolysis products in this cream that was uh, had a composition of ozonized olive oil and standard basic uh, uh, basis of uh, cosmetic creams that are widely used in our cosmetological practice. These creams were placed in this electrical field, uh, and uh, then they were treated by this electrical field to see the products that would be produced there. Uh, and at the end of this procedure, uh, these creams had accumulated a lot of uh, uh, products of these reactions, and the contents uh, turned into active forms of oxygen with different structural and uh, chemical um, bases. But so, so there's called super acids who that, that have these peroxide groups, and the ozonides that we also we also all we said that these creams have ozonides, but in uh, on the market uh, it's, um, they say just ozone, and it's only up to two percent the concentration. But they're carriers of active forms of oxygen, and uh, this uh, oxygen is a st has strong fungicide, antibacterial uh, factors, antimicrobial. Uh, 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 properties which you know from clinical biochemistry. So we use uh, these uh, creams with different composition of 3, 5 and 30 percent uh, of ozonized, uh, ozonide uh, 
oil, olive oil, we put it to the basis of the whole cream and so the physical uh, and chemical parameters and it turned out that uh, in their in the original form they had some biological activity manifested in figures which you see on the screen we see the peroxide uh, lipids, uh, the antioxidant activity was also monitored but it depended on the active content of oxygen in this cream and it turned out that the maximum uh, activity was uh, in the cream that had a 30 percent uh, addition of oil so we decided to work further on it so first it was treated by this field in the vitro and this field analytical field uh, treatment decreased uh, as it turned out um, the activity of uh, the oxidant activity by the uh, and by the antioxidant activity grew which uh, was well manifested to maximum in creams which had a 30 percent content of oxygen up to 30 percent and these graphs show the 30 percent uh, creams at the end of the procedure uh, had uh, uh, the peroxide oxidation at the level of standard therapies but the antioxidant peroxide activity one hour later was higher as compared to the other creams and the other groups but the antioxidant activity uh, was following uh, the peroxide activity of lipids. The chemical composition of this olive oil basically includes uh, um, this main component, um, alein acid. Uh, also, vit vitamin E is there is an antioxidant. Uh, linoleal, omega-6 uh, fat acids are there and other components which uh, make up the essence uh, of this cream, which is a customer cream. Also, we wanted to see how some biological components uh, change and they want to see the activity of some ferments. Not only the physical chemical parameters. Um, so now we have this uh, great uh, drug for the microcirculation and uh, by sensor it uh, can uh, identify uh, ferments uh, including FAT ferments uh, which are important in the uh, mitochondrial systems uh, so it uh, represents uh, the activity system or mitochondrial system when producing energy in this uh, combined uh, uh, microcirculation effect um, uh, to determine the function of ferments allows us to give a better evaluation um, of uh, the influence of this factor, including active forms in the active forms of oxygen. To here was like uh, the car. The we want to see how biochemically uh, this method can also work, and it's good because it's non-invasive, and it can. Uh, uh, be um, used uh, in a wide spectrum clinically. So, 30% cream uh, decreases the activity of ferments uh, to the fullest because it has um, a lot of oxygen, uh, active forms of oxygen. In these uh, oxygen ferments, hydrogenase, of course, uh, when uh, processed, when treated with this. Uh, uh, they just uh, go down, they oxidize. We, that's what we believe. I'm not sure about what the chemists uh, say. And uh, the content of this uh, forms of oxygen also affected the morphological structure, which we look for in these uh, creams. In creams with uh, a low concentration of 35 percent, uh, it was a uh, homogeneous. But uh, in the creams with uh, more active forms of oxygen, so we traced uh, this characteristic indicator of uh, oxygen this zone at the edge which is an indicator of uh, the higher hydrophilicity of these creams which means that uh, they are better in terms of penetration according to the theories of aquaporin and like operation. So creams containing a maximum amount of active forms of oxygen uh, and uh, show these uh, peripheral zones uh, with a lot of oxygen. Before and after the treatment we studied the cream, we looked at the oxidized products uh, produced by this cream by a infrared spectroscope and it turned out that the quality of content had not 
you really changed, which was uh, something that the physiotherapists were wanted to know. We continued our investigation of rats, and the goal of this uh, investigation was uh, to see uh, the systemic action of ozonides uh, and field affecting the body of animals. And it turned out that this cream that we were working on really preserved and uh, maintained um, the microcirculation following the procedure, one hour after the procedure. And uh, we also took uh, blood from these rats after the procedure. In standard uh, cases, uh, it uh, had uh, a stress of oxygen uh, close to the baseline, but after the field treatment, uh, the contamination was everywhere and there was a Increased level of oxygen in the body, so the electrical field subcutaneously gets from the cream these active forms of oxygen excite, which affects the circulatory function of the blood. There were slight changes uh, in animals uh, in terms of pro-accident features, which is characteristic for all of these approaches and uh, the activities were a little bit higher however the activity of the elements went down and uh, we also calculated that because the load um, uh, on the that was there on the animals uh, was actually based on the load on humans and it was too high for animals all the ozonites Features, um, all the all features characteristic of ozonites are there: uh, decrease of lactate, uh, and lactate degranokinase uh, showed the, the activation uh, and uh, a reinforcement in the utilization of carbohydrates. And the firmer systems that upkept this process is activated, imp improved. Here we can see a regression of the pain symptom, and we use this scale, which is a well known, uh, most simple scale, which uh, follows uh, the pain symptom three to five. Uh, uh, Procedures later in male in uh, uh, adult patients, so this uh, scale went down by two to five uh, times, and this is a standard group and how the pain syndrome regressed, uh, and uh, it uh, uh, went down into uh, not as intensely as uh, in the other group. Uh, as for the regress on neurological symptoms, uh, scoliosis. Uh, and other symptoms regressed quicker and more effectively in the uh, when uh, the cream was applied. One of the characteristic uh, effects which improve, which confirms this action, is an improvement in microcirculation. It was uh, high in um, painful zones. We also measured it in the shoulder zone, but there were no complaints. However, the market circulation was also there higher than uh, uh, in other places, um, than the standardly. So, which uh, goes uh, to show that uh, this electrode produces a systemic effect for patients even, not only on animals. As for the central uh, hemodynamics, uh, uh, they were not really um, stark. Not statistically significant, but this works internal respiration as uh, these electrons were put uh, on the sternum. Uh, the volume of the breathing was better, and uh, uh, the uh, life um, volume of lungs improved. Uh, the peroxide uh, oxidation of lipids uh, was also improved, the pro accident potential was improved. Uh, went up to 125% of uh, the antioxidant resources improved by 125%. Uh, the efficacy of the regress of the pain syndrome was in 87% in the main group and in 75% in patients who were on standard treatment. The indication for ozotens therapy, as we call, we call it ozotens therapy. Uh, as an analogy to AMS that's used in neurology, vertebrology as a physical therapeutic factor. So it's uh, not 
this is so we call it ozone tense like EMS and tense therapies so it's like uh, in combination clinically we do not see any response as for the counterindication they are also shown here here we can see the counterindications uh, that you see in systemic ozone therapy. This is an electric massage device, an American one, uh, produced in China. Uh, what makes it special is that uh, it has a silicon electrodes because of working with the screen so on a constant basis. It's not something uh, that standard electrons uh, can handle because they go haywire quickly. This is a cream that got a certificate with a 30% of olive oil concentration uh, that works quite well. And uh, this method, uh, mm, they can use this cream uh, also on their own like uh, by applying it to them in the evening. Uh, it sucks in in 20 minutes. Uh, the conclusions. The mechanism of anti-pain action of this method uh, uses uh, is based on better uh, supply of blood and vascular tone. The cardio hybrid exchange is better. Bioenergetic process in the bodies are activated. Respir external respiratory process improved. Electrostimulation regresses the pain syndrome in the vertebrae and lower extremities due to good vasotropic effect and tone of precapillary uh, uh, channel, so the blood circulation is improved through passive movement of uh, muscles by this manipulation and this healing effect happens because of uh, hemogomeral regulatory uh, combined with low impulse uh, current and active forms of oxygen. Thank you very much for your attention. We have tested out uh, this method uh, on patients. Uh, this cream also works individually. Thank you very much for your attention. As a, as a phys physiotherapeutic specialist, intracranial intrastimulation harassment by Hirasimov, his approach was developed based on that it the feeling is washed in the water you have rats those feelings were rubbed first of all they were watered and then they, they rubbed with uh, oil and cream what is the mechanism what is the procedure what does it look like because uh, gel creams uh, involves ultrasonic magnet uh, processing what comes next in electrostimulation is necessary to increase electro conductivity of skin and that's why you apply feelings what that is waterized waterizing but here cream serves as an isolator is it true Well, uh, electrostimulation in existing physiotherapy, electrostimulation that recommend by methodology of oral specialists when they when the electrode uh, they use electrode to the bone tissue. This invasive method of uh, current supply. This is this is a needle. Yes, I. Uh, of course, I do not compromise his method. Four years ago, when I was in intra-bone infusions and I studied sub-bone um, tissues in by infusion, traumatic methods, we have uh, we had strong pressure effect. I agree with. Пожалуйста, говорите ближе к микрофону. Um, please speak in the microphone. The, this method was used 
in rhythmatology and we increase pressure in proportionally by injection in any liquid blood mechanisms of restoring blood circulation and by of the methodology the fillings existed in rats but they they kept electrodes and the skin was wrapped by cream. The same amount of cream was applied. It did, the cream was water-based and but did, did, was it like an isolator? No, it was, it was a hydrophile based cream. 3% of olive oil in 10 more and 25 even more. What would show that is hydrophile composition of the salute has its effect. Of hypoprene that we know that were that it can give opportunity to increase penetration through these canals into structures. I think they are working if you apply electrodes, uh, silicon electrodes, under which the cream forms lay. Well, you know one thing, when you, you need to press those electrodes really well. When you remove them, they are dry, there is no oil on them. Physiotherapists will be surprised. What I am ready to any randomized uh, questions. Magnotherapy, magnetophorus, laser therapy. I don't know about the results. I am ready to cooperate with different parents. Sergey Victor, have a question. You had a slide were describing notch and fat. Yes, I saw. I saw it, yes. I'm curious. It was said that it was in the cream. Yes, yes, it really wasn't part of a cream. How did you get it in the cream? We were very surprised. We tried possibility of this methodology def defining market circulation using these electrodes it was recommended by well-known manufacturers we tried on system ozone therapy we always had respond reaction here we were attracted that you could apply electrode and uh, without invasive method in real time to achieve dynamics ferment activity we knew that when we used to work with other type of alloy oils they could consist antioxidants and ferment so we thought that between olive oils and the cream itself that had many biological activity these creams are one of the options to maintain antioxidant activity biological activity we took a look at those ferments depending on the oxygen. As a recommendation to, to that device, in the operational manual of this device, the following is indicated. Of course, it needs certification and standardization using other methodology, but it would, it, if it is to be certified, it will be a great news.
Sergei Petrovich, tell me please, as a proctologist specialist, there is a disease in pathology that is chronic femur disorder. Your methodology it would be helpful in, the, in this thing. Yeah, I think. <laughs> well, I think. Yeah, it would be helpful. Please don't show on your body. There is a saying that if you show on your body, well, you will have it in the future. Yeah. We had 40 patients with the same thing that it works with them. The, the methodology works with them. It was proven to be successful. And coxothrosis pain, ozone helps a lot to, re to remove the pain, the cream spoils, everything. But when you apply a field, you have to connect things, you know. When there's a pain syndrome, especially in the pelvic and urogenital and lower extremity zones, how to treat it. You have to apply a field uh, in this procedure and you have to impact uh, the parts of the vertebrae that innervate it. What about the time of the procedure? 20 minutes. So a subcutaneous uh, depot cre is created, but uh, the volume of uh, the drug subcutaneously is not significant, one to two millimeters. This is what you get from drugs. Subcutaneous depot is generated for three to five days. It uh, dissolves. Uh, so what would be the impact at the area, the time for it also to get a good result? We looked for this um, area for this electrodes. And if you expand uh, the electrodes um, area with the same power of current, uh, the contamination of the cream would higher by the medium area of our electrodes, which a little bit higher than the medium, should be a little bit higher uh, than uh, generally, but they have to be put uh, there tight, the press tight, they also it has to be heated up by a uh, hot towel on the skin, but the physiotherapist will never heat up the skin uh, by a towel, so I have to come up with all you to come up with the ways uh, to introduce an active form of oxygen non injection by non injection way. Maybe phonophoresis, magnetophoresis could be used here, it would be more effective, it would be more understandable. In OMS, because only therapists uh, followed uh, the path of using uh, ultrasound to introduce. Uh, uh, and into gynecology, gynecology uh, and dermatologists also use. Last question. In neurosurgery, uh, hernia patients are operated upon. He said the nature of the disease is of the pain is also hypoxic, but may be mechanical pressure there is uh, used. And uh, how does your procedure impact uh, the mechanical? pressure is a regress of the hernia. As for the hernia regress, it's hard to say. I don't know because we didn't do any CT before and after it. It was not the x-ray controlled, but the edema it goes away after the procedures. You either inject it pervertibly and massage it, or you should do electro stimulation. It's the best option. In Spain, there was a report last year about them getting a regression of the hernia to injections. Discolysis, disc collisions, uh, there are disc collisions, that's how they interpret. They inject a catheter with uh, 30, 30, 35 millimeters uh, micrograms uh, of azole injected. So there's this called ozonolysis. It's called ozonolysis. I'm sorry, Sergei Petrovich. Uh, it uh, does uh, the pain go away always? Yes, because uh, sometimes uh, we have patients uh, to whom no methods of treatment help, and we have to operate on them. We do not recommend this um, as a panacea. Maybe it's a ch uh, just as a choice. So we can recommend it when the patient uh, starts feeling pain, when they start referring to you. First, you know, they walk around with this pain for a couple of months and they come to you. Also, when partitions are forming, this could come in handy, but when there is a hernia, surgery, start uh, considering the removal.
This is uh, uh, a strategy of search for search surgeons, not traumatologists. Микрофон, пожалуйста. Спасибо. There is also this uh, method of organic uh, electrophoresis or electric stimulation. Usually a drug is injected and then uh, this area interarticularly if you supply administer a mixture of ozone and oxygen and then micro stimulate uh, the joint or galvanize it. The result should be better. The outcome should be better than the one with the cream. I agree with you fully. When a patient comes to us with bad pain to my office, I offer not this uh, transcutaneous, but this, I mean, I offer contamination of this procedure. First, uh, I inject them for the first three procedures. The microphone is dead. Any more questions? No. This 